6.30 rolls onward like a steamroller. Dawn. The sun rises on the Bible Belt. Hot and humid on a July morning. Within a day and a half, you'd find me working a music festival in the mountains of Tennessee. But for now, I sit drunkenly staring at a screen that stares back with its dick out, laughing because I can't see past the obvious distractions keeping me from the task at hand. Today I finally managed to get some real cigarettes. A victory, no? Perhaps. But a failure in my own eyes. Cigarettes are harder to quit than heroin, and that is from personal experience. I don't need to fix a boy each time something bad happens. I don't need to fix each time I finish a meal. Each time I have some drama. Or each time I wake up. No, my addiction is much more insidious. Is it the same way for those who control a greater majority of the populace? Do they wake each day ready and willing to put those who do not have under their iron thumbs laughing? all the while that they are the lucky ones, and we are the sheep? I've seen too many columns lately of activists arrested for simply liking a column on Facebook. If that's the case, how long will it be until they come knocking at whatever location I happen to be at? What trouble would I get in for just voicing my opinion? No matter the view. Probably a terribly long sentence, more than rapists, pedophiles, and true. Well, I hesitate to say criminals because who am I to judge what is right and what is wrong? Is it not a matter of perspective? Hell, I eat bacon, I like strange porn, and I get off through whatever means I can. I have my vices, doesn't everyone? This story isn't about me, though. My story lies somewhere underneath the transmission. A softly whispered vocation to the gods and goddesses that may or may not watch over those of us that wish there to be more to the world around us. Those who see the world and hope for the magic to return to it. Perhaps it's not magic. I hope will return. Perhaps it's just the magic that used to fuel our fears in the darkest of night. That primal urge to just find shelter against that which we don't understand. But I understand evil. I have been it. I have lived it. I am not hard by my own definition. But what artist is great in their own eyes? Using the two-lighter technique, I spark the cigarette that I haven't had in some time. Too poor to even buy rolling papers at the local store. I've read the Bible. I didn't like it. But I smoked more of it than even I care to admit, I'm probably going to die of some fucked up poison. It's a mystery until they realize just how careless I've been with my own life, puffing away at the carcinogens and biblical verses. Never knows best. Yes, it's written on all the cigarettes I've ever lit up. Just as the verse is pasted upon the actions of those who cater to the death that will come in the end. Children who have been raped and suffer, the loss of childhood and innocence, wrapped up in a political struggle that they, like myself, do not understand. The men and women who die and spill their blood upon the land made of sand and terror blowing across the mentals of an apathetic world. Perhaps you've done a search for my screen name. Perhaps you've managed to find past attempts to reach out to the world which I am part of. I have fucked up, and I feel shame and guilt. But do these people who order the deaths of the innocent realize the same thing, that they bow their heads in the hot, dusty morning in the mirror after their shave and ask themselves how they got there? Do they even question the evil that has invaded their lives, pulling them further and deeper into the spiral? I believe in magic. I believe that we have the power to alter our realities. And sadly, I see that others are doing the same as I, though with no remorse at the loss they cause while they gain their power. Still, the struggle wages on for the souls of the not so damned. The battle of the free against the powers of those who put a price on that. Freedom is not free.
but shouldn't have to come at the price of a human life, no matter how corrupt it may be. Assad sends out his troops to break the spirit of the people, and yet they rise. Upon the bodies of the weak, the poor, the dying, they rise. Perhaps Manson was right. Helter skelter, swine, rise! It all ties into the synchronicity, the singularity that binds us. Grant Morrison wrote of it in his work, The Invisibles, and I too now hit on that resonance. I am neither a grand writer of merit, nor a well-paid journalist who shows the world for what it is, a cesspit of terror, pain, and hell. But isn't the world too a place of joy, pleasure, and nirvana? We accept the pain with the pleasure and realize that it's part of the struggle that the world around us has set for us to experience. Is it normal to struggle for what we feel is normal? A good home, nice things, and a penchant for the expensive virtues of heaping up with the fucking Joneses. Fuck the Joneses! They have bent over and let Uncle Sam and the rest of the world ass-rape them into the belief that that is socially cool. Let's put it in words that anyone would understand. Bend the fuck over, and this is going to be a good touch. That's right. I went there. Like an overly friendly uncle. Let me put my cock of understanding in your asshole of awareness. Just hold still and it won't hurt. Hell, drink this shitty tasting beverage and the pain will go away. You won't even remember it tomorrow. I had to do it. Now you, t now you do too. Isn't that right? <sighs> Wake up, America. Wake up, Earth. They are taking your freedoms. They are taking your innocence. They are taking you. All of you. They are raping you and not even giving you a reach around. They are giving it all they got and leaving people like you and I bloodied, hurt, and confused in the dark confines of a house we thought we were safe in. We never knew that evil could lurk so close to home until the bastard crept up in the shadows of darkness of familiarity and promptly fisted the life and fight right out of our bodies. You're getting fisted now. Hell, let's face it. You're getting more than fisted. You're getting gangbanged by the whole damn home team and the visitors as well. And who cares, right? It's not like this is anything new. This is all the norm. This is all that we've spent our time dreading, but have been unable to fight back against. Like suddenly getting a straight razor in the dead of night and lopping off that uncle or father's or mother's offending hand dick or otherwise now that we have a weapon now that we have the net they are trying to take our voice they are trying to take away our freedom and they are taking your goddamn self you if you are hearing this you are no longer a child yet you still allow the government to creep in the middle of the night and continue to poke and prod at you we're a nation of lovers, musicians, artists, poets, and warriors. We are a world of souls who are slated for hell. But right this fucking second are living in the heaven of our own creation. Will you allow them to take this from you? Will you allow them to break your spirit and rape your rights as harshly as Hitler so kindly exterminated his own kind? Hypocrisy and fear drive the nation around us. The leaders fight to maintain control over a quickly learning herd. We know that the shepherd can only catch so many of us. We know that if we all run at the same time, he is more or less unable to do a damned thing. So why then do we sit here waiting for a hero when we ourselves are the legend waiting to be born. I don't know anymore, my friends. Perhaps it's just me being drunk or whatever I do. See, this shit hurting us in a way that we cannot heal from. If you give a mouse a cookie, fuck that. 
If you give a mouse a cookie, it's almost always at the end of a snap trap. Or isn't chocolate chip. Alright, so insert your favorite here if it's not what you like. Hell, if you don't even like cookies, put whatever you care for, even if you're a goddamn pedophile. People have to believe in something, right? I don't know what I'm doing in this life, and I doubt I ever have. I have spent more time running, mooching, stealing, and lying than most people I know, and I regret as much as one who's gotten away with it can. Which is to say, I wish I never had the ability to do so. But that takes away from who I am, so I can't really regret that which has made me this ink-stained monster of substance abuse and neglect with rotting teeth. I smell the decay and lack of care I have allowed myself. I see and smell the problems I have allowed happen to me. I don't treat myself well and I suffer from it. I cough up blackened masses of phlegm. I'm out of shape. I feel a severe need to try every drug that I come across. And not because I need it, but because I desire the change. The differing perspective to a life that I haven't, in my eyes, succeeded at. I am a failure because, as I have let each and every one of you down. Not just you, but my mother, and her mother before her. My father was nothing more than a come-and-go sperm donor, and I only had the opportunity to see him once. But I realized that it wasn't blood that made the family. It was the people that made up the experience for the life involved. I have been a saint and a sinner, the king and the fool. I have spoken with death and fallen in love with the dying. But I also realize that you cannot romance death and expect her to simply stand by and ignore the flirtations of a youth in the throes of a hopeless romantic wandering. I have seen friends rise and fall, too often felted by suicide and their own hopelessness, unable to see the true power they had and the ability to see the world for the fucked up hooker that it is. 50 Cent the Rapper said it right. Death gotta be easy, cause life is hard. And he's only too true when he says you'll end up scarred. When I look at my hands and body, I see the scars of a life's past. Too many bad decisions, good sex, bad drugs, good times, and bad love. I see the emotional scars underneath, the unreliability, the lack of will to carry through on what I believe in. If I had really believed in what I thought, was reality even a year ago, I'd be dead today. I was that sure that my life was nothing more than a cruel joke, a punchline, nothing more than a paint bucket over the head of my awareness and expansion, but now, now I laugh with the love and pain of it, all. Oh, I cry through the fits of maniacal laughter, and I laugh through my tears, because after all, it's only true if you laugh. I bid you all a good day. May you find the thing in your life that holds you back. And may you throttle that fucker with steel hands of Tarzan. May you lift your head and call out with the wolves of the world and with two moons. May you always see the glass is not half empty, but full of liquid promise. The water to be used for a plant yet to grow. Water the seed of doubt in your mind and find your own glitches in the system. No matter how hard it may be to see them for what they are, realize that you are nothing more than a blink of an eye in the grand scheme of things. But you can always be the sand in the eye of the oyster of reality, and yet of the world. Love comes not from gifts and begotten, but the will that was forgotten. Regards. Just a voice on the net. A popular event with deadly consequences. Tonight, local police say enough is enough. It seems like every year it gets a little worse. On Sunday, the U.S. Coast Guard called Kentucky State Police and said they found a body in the Ohio River near that gathering. 
The Coast Guard pulled the body of 24-year-old Jesse Waters of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, out of the water. That was in Union County, Kentucky, at the Sturgeon Island area. That's just about 100 feet from the gathering of the Juggalos. Police have since confirmed Waters disappeared from the gathering Friday night before his body turned up at this island and say they don't suspect foul play here, but Hardin County Sheriff's deputies do say the event Waters was attending is bringing more trouble than it's worth. And as Local 6's Jonathan Warren explains, deputies say the event needs a new home. That's tonight's top story. The insane clown posse's gathering of the Juggalos is now over and the cleanup process has begun. The Juggalos are leaving town until next year, but for one local sheriff, he wishes they'd leave and not come back. A lot of drug arrests. We had a couple farms taken off of people. So we had one guy that uh, was high on drugs and tried to stab a couple people with a piece of glass. Any town would love for 10,000 people to come and visit, right? Well, not Hardin County, Illinois. Sheriff Lloyd Cullison says it's not worth the trouble. I've been a policeman 36 years, and I've never seen anything like this just out of control. He says to gain control of any situation is tough because of the lack of manpower his department has. For a police department to not be able to handle it and do anything about it just makes you feel helpless. Although Illinois State Police did assist his department, it still puts strain on resources that are sparse. Without them guys, I would have been in big trouble. He says the trouble only grows year after year. And with a jail that only holds eight and arrest in the hundreds, he says enough is enough. It seems like every year it gets a little worse. If he had any choice in the matter, he never wants them to return. I'm afraid I'd have to ask him to uh, have it somewhere else. We can't, ha we can't handle it in Hardin County. I tried talking to event organizers and the owner of Hog Rock Campgrounds about this, and they said they don't speak to the media and asked me to leave the property immediately. In Hardin County, Illinois, Jonathan Warren, WPSD, Local 6. Well, again, police say they don't suspect foul play in the death of 24-year-old Jesse Waters. They'll release the official cause of death after an autopsy and toxicology report.